Hello, and welcome to I Remember When, sponsored by the Gresham Historical Society. I'm Gwenda McCall. This evening, we're going to take a walk down memory lane with a man who has delighted Portland and East Multnomah County audiences with his rich baritone voice for many years. I'd like you to meet Bill Elliott. Bill, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Um, I think some of our audience might remember you from your radio shows back in the 40s. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your radio experience? Well, it was for the Blazing Granite Company at that time, and, and uh, uh, Joseph Sampietro was the violinist, and John Emmel was the organist. And we'd put that on every Sunday afternoon about uh, 6 o'clock, I think, it was about 6 mm -hmm. o'clock. And uh, would it be a uh, half hour program. In the early 40s? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were on there about five years altogether. And I, I never had some marvelous time because those two men were very fine musicians, high, high up in the musical class. Now, what kind of songs did you sing, and how many would Every you sing? Every kind. We sang. We sang the popular songs of the day, and then religious, or maybe be one religious song, or uh, be uh, several other the, of the type that were, weren't religious. All right, give us an example. We're in the early 40s, and you're on the radio. Yes. Give us an example. Well, I tell you, I could give you an example of what uh, one one of the of the announcers made a slight error. He he caught kind of sound asleep at the helm, and. Uh, and he, he suddenly woke up to the fact that I was going to sing, to sing a, a hymn. And he said, my Jesus, thou art standing. Oh. <laughs> so I, did they have to cut it out or did it go over the no, air? It went over the air. Oh my. <laughs> and they, they uh, didn't let him forget it for a long, long time after that. Oh, that's funny. We had, we had some, uh, it was a wonderful experience because we reached an awful, awful lot of people for the late afternoon mm -hmm. and all. So and it was before nice. very many people had television sets. So That's they right. Really, now, you brought with you some really interesting sheet music. This one, Der Fuhrer's Face, and it has Donald Duck throwing an apple at the Fuhrer. <laughs> you, do you remember singing things like that? Yes, well, I'll tell you, that, that was my son, my young son's favorite song. He loved that song because it was spitting in the Fuhrer's face. And in those days, that was the big thing. You mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. The war was on, and that was what they wanted to happen to the Fuhrer. I guess we all had our own <laughs> forms of propaganda. Huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and um, this one I singled out especially because of Ozzy Nelson. Oh, yes. I'd like a close-up here on Ozzy oh, Nelson. Yeah. Yes, isn't he marvelous? Stars fell on Alabama last night. That was a wonderful song on this day. Oh. And he, he really could do a nice job with it. He played, he played several instruments, you know. He played, I think he played the, the mandolin and the guitar. Hmm. Did he have a whole orchestra, though? No, they, I th they could have had, they could have had, but oftentimes there two, there'd be three or four of them just in the family would hmm. go on a family show. Hmm. So it was really nice. And then came along David and Ricky, yeah. and the story <laughs> goes on, Ozzy and Harry. On and on, yes, on and on. Here is a picture taken of you a little later in the 40s, and you're at Knott's Berry Farm. Yes. And you're on the right, and I noticed on the back of this picture that it's not even called Knott's Berry Farm yet, it's Knott's Berry Place. That's right. It came a Berry Farm, uh, how that all started. He told me the story how it started. They began to selling pies from their berry farm there. Uh, just uh, off the side of the street, and that's how it all started, because the people liked the pies. For heaven's sake. Now, besides singing popular songs, you also did some opera. Tell us yes. about your opera background. Well, we used to, uh, there was a number of opera companies at that time were starting up, you know, because uh, they wanted to have uh, a little opera in the city, and uh, there wasn't much doing. So, uh, the first opera we did was uh, Il Trovatore, and I did that, that role when I was 18. 18, and what yeah. year would that be? Uh, that, oh, <laughs> that's hard to remember. You're about 26 or 7 yeah, 20, around in there. About 23 or 4, yeah, 22 or 3 Some, or 4. Somewhere in there. Yeah, and, and uh, believe me, that was a hard job because I had a tough master a hold of me, and he was really rough. He wouldn't allow any mistakes at all. It had to be just right. Now, is he one of the fellows that I have a picture that is of? It. Yeah, the old gentleman uh, in the picture there that shows him as in one. the operas in Germany. He was in at the at the opera in Germany and also in in Copenhagen. 
and, and spent around many the, years in it. And around are some of it, the, the roles That's the that, roles he, that played. he was in, that he played, yeah. Now, you have a funny story about him. Um, the he first sat day on my you, chest. You yeah. sat on your chest. <laughs> well, there's one way of teaching, you know, that uh, is by showing. And he said, you're not getting it, you're not getting it. So he threw me down on the floor. I was pretty husky, but he did it. And he threw me down on the floor and sat on my chest. Now he says, breathe me your diaphragm or you may die. You see? So it would be better, that, I thought it might be better that I breathe from the diaphragm so I wouldn't die. So I started breathing from the diaphragm. And you never forgot that and lesson? I never forgot that lesson. No, I did not. <laughs> and here's a picture of you with a group of people and one of your other teachers, your teachers in the center. Yes, it was uh, Lazar Samoylov. Uh, he was a very famous teacher of his day. Hmm. And uh, there's also a young lad from uh, Powell Valley. There's um, Lloyd Arvidsson. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, he was in it. He came there, too. From out in your neck of the yeah, woods. And he and I were great friends, great pals, so yeah, we, he came with me at the same time. Hmm. And then we have a close-up just of you. Want to tell us about this one? <laughs> well, that happens to be um, the Barber Seville. Oh, no, wait a minute. Let's see if I... No. Looks like more like Carmen. Carmen. That's Carmen. That was I had another picture of the Barber Seville, very, sim very similar. In the, well, you didn't show me that one. Well, I forgot to tell you that <laughs> <laughs> But that, that was, uh, yes, that was uh, uh, Carmen. And uh, uh, I can remember some very funny things about that, but there was a lady that sang opposite me that was uh, quite heavy. And when she sang the duet with me from Carmen, she, uh, I don't know, she began to shake me so that I couldn't hardly, you know, sing. Oh. And, uh, and she, she breathed so heavily. <laughs> but, but we got through it, but I don't know. Oh, that's funny. And I wanted to laugh so badly. I, <laughs> I was right on the verge of going all to pieces. And, and you're only about 19 years yeah. old, so it'd be twice as funny sure, when you're 19. Absolutely. <laughs> Over everything. <Terrible. laughs> all right, let's go back to your roots a little bit. Now, you uh, came from the Gresham area, just yes. East Gresham area. And this picture is of your grandfather and grandma, and your dad is standing right behind grandpa, right? That's right. And they, uh, the whole family uh, were engaged in, in store business. I mean, uh, like uh, the brothers, all were engaged in store business, like uh, general merchandising. For heaven's and, sake. Uh, well, one of them was over in Damascus, another. Uh, up uh, just a short distance from the old Elliott store. He, he was in there. And then uh, my uncle uh, Frank went up into Alaska in the gold rush and he opened a clothing store up there. Huh. So uh, it was quite an interesting life. And uh, in those days, uh, some of the fellows would uh, give these uh, miners a little money to support them to go out and, and mine. And then if they struck it rich, why well, then they'd give them back, you see. Uh, that's how he did business up there. Up in Alaska, but yes. it was a lot different but then. But he, uh, the Princess Sophia went down in the straits with him on it, and that was 200 and 340 people lost their lives there. Oh, And goodness. he was on board there. That's too bad. Now, this picture was taken prior to your birth, so it has to oh, be yes, before a 1907. Time. A long time before. And how did this family come to settle in Gresham? What's the history beside Well, I'll tell you, uh, they, uh, of course, they crossed the plains from Missouri, the Elliots crossed the plain from Missouri and, and uh, came over the Oregon Trail. and uh, Like wagon trains? Yes, they did. Yeah, so I'm kind of proud of that fact. I really? It was, was a very hard life that they had. And, and uh, they used to uh, come through for, on the trail and then they'd get over to Boring and they'd, they'd stay there for a little while to decide where they wanted to uh, set up their uh, mm -hmm. uh, farm the land. Hmm. And they had to uh, take those trees out, which is an enormous task. Oh, and for the farming, in sure. In those days, they didn't have the machinery. They just uh, usually they either burned them out, you know, with a charcoal burn, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, bore a hole in the tree and start a fire in it, and then uh, let it uh, just uh, go on and on. Uh, now that's great. called coal pitting, right? Yes, they used to call it coal pitting. It, uh, that fascinates me. They would take it and, yeah. and put the fire down towards the yes. root, mm -hmm. and then throw dirt on it. Yes. Uh, and, and it would just sit there for like six to eight months and yes. just burn the roots out. Yes. I, I still have at home the old uh, bore, the thing that you bored it out with. Oh, I should have brought that along. I never thought of it. But, and 
Uh, I should have brought that along because that would have shown you exactly. Uh, the thing about that long, bored, and you could bore the th hole out real good with it. And you stick the fire down yeah, inside there. Get it started. Now, um, did they ever have any accidents with the fire going on? So well, yes. If if it burned out, then you didn't. It wouldn't burn the roots down underneath. You see, mm -hmm. it had to. It had to be uh, and con just all controlled. Sometimes they had to maybe put dirt over the top of it so that it would. Uh, the heat would stay down at the roots. Anybody ever get burned? Well, I had a sister that was running along one day and she, uh, the thing caved in where, where the root was and she burned her f legs real badly. And, uh, but uh, but the, the root was actually burned away and so yes, when, and she she right all, when she stepped there at all... Right on down, yeah, sure. I did hear a story that when they, people planted like berries in a, in a field yes. where they'd coal pitted, that the berries never grew as well where the stump had been burned. I guess it just parched all the goodness that's out of the right. earth. That's right. That's exactly what it does. Hmm. Yes, that's exactly. Although, uh, you talk about it being some kind of uh, fertilizer for some types of things. Oh, like, sure, the yeah. ash. Yeah, mm -hmm. for some types of things, but some things would not grow in that stuff. For heaven's sake. Okay, let's go on now with your mother's side of the family, the uh, bonas. Yeah, the bonas, yes. Want to tell us about this picture? Well, that's a, yes. The, the, at the time this picture was taken, the Meyer and Frank company downtown was just a basement with a cover over the top. And uh, they were again beginning to bring in some real nice clothes. So my grandfather and those three girls went on down to Portland and uh, they bought those outfits for the, the, all three girls. The height of fashion. The height of fashion in those days, yes and, it was. And your mother is the one in the middle. Yes. Now, how did the Bonas, and this is Bona Park Road right out yes, here. Yes, Bona Park Road is out How did they uh, get here? They came uh, over the California Trail. They went, uh, they went into California from uh, Tennessee. Hmm. And uh, they, uh, they uh, mined all, all the different mining places, the river and so forth, down in California. Came up through to Bakersfield and uh, the mining there. And they had a terrific earthquake there, and it dammed up the river, and they had an awful flood in there, and, but, and the bonus had the only high spot, so they had an awful lot of people in that one high spot. So uh, they, uh, uh, at that time, there were a lot of snakes, too, came up with it, and, and mm. a lot of disease, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. people were getting sick with it, and the fever and so mm -hmm. forth. So they, uh, my grandfather sold his part to uh, uh, Baker, it was a, uh, I think he was a colonel or something, you know, a captain or a colonel baker. Mm -hmm. and, then, and that was a field, they had fields there of, of corn and, and uh, like uh, wheat and different things so, so that the people coming over the trail would stop there. To, to and purchase, load up. Yeah, purchase supplies, you know. huh? So then that, that's how it became Baker's Field. Well, that's an interesting bit of history. <laughs> and I have an awful lot of relatives down there yet. <laughs> and the little... Uh, scales that you see that the old miner up there is holding mm -hmm. was my great-grandfather's scales and of course it came to my grandfather too so uh, that's kind of that's kind of an interesting fact and they they mined down uh, all uh, in California then they came up through uh, Oregon and did some mining up southern Oregon then went on up through uh, Washington and Idaho <coughs> mining hmm. <coughs> pardon me and when they came back they uh, Cut over to Damascus and decided that was a good place to settle. Settled so we right took up two, pardon me, 240 acres. That was the amount of land that most of them mm -hmm, would take. Mm -hmm. And, and that, uh, the eldest also had their 240 acres over there. Now is that a land grant? If you were married, you got <coughs> twice as much and you got the 240, is that I, how that I don't worked? really know about that. Well, I'll have to look into the history on yes, that one uh, myself a little bit. And I know this much that that two Bona girls married two Elliot boys, and so I've got double cousins over there. Oh, how did your <laughs> folks meet? Well, uh, that wasn't very hard. They only lived a few miles apart, you know, and they all went to the same church. Hmm. When you start going to church with them, that's, that's the end of it right uh, there. Of course, that was about the <laughs> only right. entertainment. But sure, that's they had the only out, you know. Um, <laughs> let's go on with some more of these photos. This is a photo of your family just before you were born. Yes. Uh, yes, that's, that's right. And, uh, uh, the all the girls in Lotus wore ribbons and then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do that anymore. <laughs> and this one, tell us about this one. 
This is the old house where I was born. In fact, I was born in the kitchen of that house. The I kitchen? Don't know Why the kitchen? Well, I, I never did know. But I know that my aunt was the uh, one that delivered me. Hmm. And uh, at, this, uh, at this time, uh, I, I was about, in that picture there, that shows a small picture of me with my mother there. And I think I was about two or three years old. When you're the baby in her uh, arms. Mm -hmm. Now this home is still standing. Still we drove standing. out and saw it the other day. It's on Southeast 282nd, which used to be called East Pal Valley That's Road, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's confused me. Pal Valley Road <laughs> and perpendicular to East Pal Valley sure, Road. Mm -hmm. sure. And the address is the address is 2725 Southeast 282nd. If anyone wants to drive out and see Bill Elliott's home that he was born in. <laughs> you can't really find it for the brush around it now. It is I, didn't, overgrown. I didn't recognize it. I, I could hardly recognize it mm -hmm. at all because so much had grown up around there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, that's what happens you know, through the years. And just down the road a little bit, your grandpa had the Elliott store. Yes. And it was, um, we drove by there and right on the site is the Lifeline Baptist Church where the <laughs> store used to be. Yes, that's right. That, um, that at that time, uh, general merchandise carried everything from button shoes to corsets and everything else under the sun. That was uh, uh, like plows and harrows and just anything uh, that pertained to a farm. Hmm. And that's the way they uh, worked. They even out back, way up on the side, back of the hill there, about a fourth of a mile away, was a log cabin that they used to keep the dynamite in that they, all those people had to clear their land with, you know. The, Oh, the people that could afford dynamite. Uh, Everyone yes, else did coal right. pitting, right? That's right. They all did. The easiest way, actually, was uh, coal pitting. Really? I and suppose that, it was the most thorough. Yeah, it was. Uh, but you, when you think about a team dragging out the enormous roots, and that was old growth timber. All mm -hmm. that was old growth timber back there, some eight and ten feet through. Gresham was just timber, right? Yeah, Everywhere. everything was just brush. <laughs> brush of all kinds. Now, I see the old wagon. Yes. My dad used to drive that into town into Portland about twice a week and usually picked up quite a few uh, uh, people along the way, you know. Oh. They had the, had the uh, wagon full, they'd wait for him and so the wagon and they'd take him on into Portland. And what route did he take to go get he the supplies? He usually took the division, I think division is what, Division, division Street. Street, and it was just potholes. Oh. Terrible, Isn't terrible that stuff. something? <laughs> this is a marvelous photo of inside the store. And I could just sit and examine this with a magnifying glass. There are so many items. Tell us a little bit about inside the store. Well, inside the store, of course, it, it, uh, I can remember, they used to have a, a big pot belly stove that they, they had right there in the middle of the floor, well, right about there. And uh, these old timers would come in and talk politics. That was, the, that was where politics really grew, <laughs> boy, I'm telling you. And there was some nasty little fights over politics at that time. They get an awful you know, upset and go out, and the, they decide to go outside and have it out. Oh, gee. <laughs> that was quite common. And then uh, they used also, they had a funny thing uh, for the candy and soda pop. They'd have, uh, they had a little dice deal that they shake it, you know, uh, either uh, double or nothing, you know. So either you didn't have to pay or you had to pay <laughs> That's double. Right. Yeah. For the gambler and, they, and all They all this. wanted that. They all wanted to do that, you know. It was, I guess, part of the fun, you know, of the day. So it was really, it was really just something that they decided that was the right thing to do. And inside the old store, and then in the back, I remember that they had a huge tank in there for, for kerosene. Kerosene? Now, I don't think nowadays that you'd ever hear of anybody keep kerosene in their store. But the huge tank there, and that, everybody see, they had no electric lights or anything. I forgot. Everything was run by <laughs> kerosene. So you had to get the kerosene for your kerosene That's lights. That's right. So. You did, you know. And then you, you know, I remember everybody had to trim the, that's one thing you did, that the girls did before the, anything happened in the evening was to trim those wicks. So mm. nice and level, so nice, nice light, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that was the big thing, a big hanging lamp out in the living room. And, that, that was the kind of lights we had. And out, in the, out at the barn was usually just an old lantern, you know. Mm. But it seemed all right at the time. It seemed like we were living in a, in a high society of the day. <laughs> you didn't have as much to compare it to, <laughs> no. so not like now. No. Now, this is all the first floor, and it looks like a mezzanine for dry yes, goods. But what was upstairs? <laughs> well, upstairs, they, well, believe it or not, they had a skating rink, and also they danced up there from time to time. 
uh, that was quite common in those old stores, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, when you danced you, or, you, or you skated, you were usually alongside of some plows and harrows and things oh, like right. that. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>, really? Right. <laughs> sure. That was part of it, you know. Would you dance to an old crank Victrola? Or? I think that they usually had, could have, you, there was fiddlers around the neighborhood that could really play the fiddle and they could dance to that, you know. Well, they used to have in our home, they used to have all kinds of dances in the home old time dances and dad used to do a lot of calling he was good at it so oh fun yeah. now this i already mentioned that the store is not there but did your family own it until they tore it down how that uh, they yes uh, they, i don't think so i think this i believe it sold out to the probably sold out uh, everything i don't know just how it all happened now it's been so long ago now how did they do during the depression then well it was a real that was tough and uh, lots of times the uh, the people, uh, they just didn't have money. Mm -hmm. There was no way of getting it, and it just seemed like the, the store had to stand back of them, and oftentimes the store lost quite a considerable sum of money. Hmm. But you couldn't let, in those days, you didn't let somebody down because they were down and out. Mm -hmm. You didn't do that. You supported them all the way as far as you could. That, that was common. So I think there was a good feeling. Must have had quite a credit line extended then. Yes, a long one, a big one. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, I know it was kind of a disaster to the store, too, uh, but that's all right. Uh, thinking back, maybe that was the way it should have been. Mm -hmm. People know. looking out after each other a that's little right, more. That's right, they did. Now people don't even know who their neighbors are. <laughs> no, no, and they really don't want to know. Yeah, I, yeah, some people like it. That's right. I hope this picture shows up clear enough, but this home is still standing, too. Yes, that that was uh, my uncle Ben. Uh, uh, he uh, that's where he lived before he built his new house just above the store. Hmm. Always, but uh, in those days, they, I remember they had uh, uh, the pitcher pump in the kitchen mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. You know, you, you never think of anymore because mm -mm. they had to have a well. You see, then on top of the the old store, they had uh, a windmill. And a big old tank up there, and that uh, supplied the store. For heaven's sake. Uh, it was quite a deal. And a lot of, a lot of people had windmills. I mean, the old Chase place, some about a quarter of a mile from our place, they had a windmill up there for many, many years. Chase Road. Chase All this Road. comes Chase into, Road, yes. into um, view when you start saying these names. Now, this home is just off the corner of Salquist That's and right. 282nd, and it's still standing. There's a lot of brush around it, but it's a real jewel. <laughs> used, to, used to have the old uh, Oliver Chilled Plows, the big old sign with it used to be just back of that building. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at an, an, another piece of sheet music. Oh, yes. Isn't that well, beautiful? Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there, that the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming. You see, that was the kind of thing. We had, I'll tell you, there was a tremendous patriotism along about that time. Mm -hmm. The people were just uh, willing to do anything to help the war along. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell you that uh, uh, it meant something. It meant something to the people that were supporting mm -hmm. the fellows. Like they figured they were, a lot of them were right out of their own families, mm -hmm. you know, they were over there. And uh, my George, it, it was uh, f they were just singing patriotic songs all the time. I remember. I can remember that very well. Uh, no, there's a long, long trail a winding into the land of my dreams, and we all could sing those songs every night after work. Our family gathered in the living room, and my sister played uh, either the piano or the organ, and we all sang, all sang around the organ, hmm. and you know. Uh, you, we had to play our piano, and the neighborhood kids used to come in there, and we'd play that piano, and it had the words of the music on the, right on the, the roll. The roll, uh-huh, yeah? uh-huh. So that, my, you ought to heard the welkin ring around there sometime. Oh, what fun. <laughs> well, that's the way they used to do, and, the, and everybody would uh, kind of join in the things. Hmm. I think that was great. But this, when you speak about the, uh, uh, the war songs of the day at that time, they were all, uh, well, they might call them tearjerkers in a way we would, we'd talk about them now, you know, where daddy over there, you know, a little baby's prayer at twilight for daddy over there and things Aww. of this kind, you know. But that was normal for the time and, 
And uh, of course, Mademoiselle from Marmontiers was a song that came out over there. <laughs> Parlez-vous. <laughs> it was a great song for, for the day, you know, and comical. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I would be, I don't know whether I should sing it or not. I'm kind of, kind of wondering about that, you know. But wait, I'll do it anyhow. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> well, Mademoiselle from Armentiers, parlez-vous. Oh, Mademoiselle from Armentiers, parlez-vous. Oh, oh, <laughs> should I say it or not? Oh, Mademoiselle from Marmontiers hadn't taken a bath for years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was the song, one of the songs that was over there Very everybody sang. You uh, were telling me earlier <laughs> about a song about somebody that lived in the bamboo. Oh, my little bimbo down on the bamboo aisles. She's waiting there for me beneath the bamboo tree. She's got the other bimbos beat a mile. She'll grab you by the collar and she'll holler all aboard for Bimbo Bay. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we had crazy songs. That's oh, yeah. terrific. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's better than, but uh, yes, we have no bananas. Oh. Uh, that was kind of cute in those days too, you know. I have more pictures and we're going to have time to show, oh, so well, let me go through some of these quickly. Sure. In fact, let's just show pictures instead of us and we'll talk about them. Sure, that's right. This was your dad's first car, 19, four, 1913. It was a Maxwell Flanders. If you haven't heard of that, that's, that's what it was. Maxwell Flanders, all uh, right. The tires were 36 by 4. 4, so, not yeah. very wide, 4. No, it was sharp. And this is a picture of you in grade school at which school? Orient. Orient School. And the reason they called that Orient was because some Ori so many the Orientals living up there. They had oh, is that Japanese right? and Chinese, yes, living up there. I guess I just never thought about where well, they got the name. that's how they get the name. That's what I hear. <laughs> and um, let's uh, show this picture of you just graduating from um, eighth grade. <laughs> yes, uh, we were quite a rough, tough bunch. <laughs> I thought we'd quite grown up at the time, you know, actually. Uh, and uh, but you know, we uh, we didn't dress uh, the swanky dress that they dress nowadays, mm -hmm. kids. You know, just had a good time, just oh, comfortable. Man, yes. Just old overalls, and I'll tell you one thing: most of us came right out of the cow barn, you know, and all those milking cows, you know, and go right to school. Go from right there. to school. And the teacher knew us by sight and smell. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to have more time to talk about the pranks that you pulled in I, high school. Well, I try not to do that. And some of the times you pulled, <laughs> played hooky, but we really are running out of time. And sure. Bill, I have enjoyed your uh, visit so much. Thank you for joining well, us. Well, I enjoyed kind of imparting a little of it to you because it, uh, looking back now, it all seems so so odd and sort of, well, it was a little bit strange. Like another world away. Yeah, it's another world. Mm -hmm. and the you, world's you, changed you, so much. Yeah, you lived uh, through a, a, a certain part of it, and then all of a sudden you're into something different. Mm. Well, thank you so much. And thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us on I Remember When. I'm Gwenda McCall. Good night. <laughs>